All right, guys, we're talking today about sequences and series. We're going to talk more about two different kinds, arithmetic or arithmetic and geometric. We'll talk about that in A2, A3, that sort of thing. But <clears throat> today we're just talking about sequences and stuff in general. So pay attention to what we're doing here. Vocabulary-wise, all right, we're going to talk about infinite sequences and finite. What does the word infinite mean? Never-ending. Never ending. It's endless, good, like infinity. And then what does finite mean? Ending. It has an end. Good. Has an end. All right. Good that we. Whoops. Good that we know those words. <clears throat> okay. When I talk about terms of a sequence, if I have the sequence of numbers five, seven, eleven, fifteen, what do those three dots mean? It keeps, it keeps going. Okay. Good. If I talk to you about what the third term is, what would you guys tell me the third term of this sequence is? Eleven. Eleven. All right. The term means like, like which number you're talking about. The fourth term of this sequence is 15. So when they talk about term number, they're going to use an N. All right? That's the, the notation you're going to see. <clears throat> so if I look at this first question, and this is what I expect to see on a quiz or a test or any web assigned you have. This question is exactly is as easy as it looks. It says write the first four terms of each sequence. I would expect you to write, okay, A sub 1, A sub 2, A sub 3, and A sub 4. How do you figure out what the first term is, you think? What do you do with 1? You plug it in. This is what I expect to see, 3 times 1 minus 2. I want to see that you guys understand you're plugging in whatever term number you're looking for into N. And then what's 3 times 1? 3? Minus 2 is 1. So to find the second term, we're going to plug in 2 for n. So you would write 3 times 2 minus 2, right? Equals 6 minus 2 is what? 4. <clears throat> to find the third term, what do I plug in for n? So 3 times 3 minus 2. 3 times 3 is? 9. nine and 9 minus 2 is? Seven. All right, good. The fourth term, I'm going to going to plug in 4. So 3 times 4 is 12, minus 2 is 10. So if I asked you guys, what are the first four terms of this sequence, you would tell me it's 1, 4, 7, and 10. Literally that easy. <clears throat> so on a test or a quiz, if I say, what are the first four terms, or something like that, and all you do is give me 1, 4, 7, and 10, I'm sure you didn't cheat and copy off of somebody. I know that you plugged it in your calculator, but I need to see this part that says, hey, I understand I'm plugging in whatever term I'm looking for into the end. Does that make sense? Okay, so same thing here. I'm going to find the first term, the second term, the third term, and the fourth term. All right, so 3 plus negative 1 to the first power. Well, what's negative 1 to the first power? negative 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So now I have 3 plus negative 1 to the second power. What's negative 1 to the second power? No. Oh, one. 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. So now I'm plugging in 3. So I have, whoops, 3 times, oh, it's negative 1 cubed. Negative 1, right? 3 minus 1 is 2. Now I plug in 4, so I have 3 plus negative 1 to the 4th power. What's negative 1 to the 4th power? 1, and 3 plus 1 is 4. So the first four terms of this sequence are here. Questions? You, you don't even have to think, guys. You can literally in your calculator put 3 plus parenthesis, negative 1, close parenthesis, raise the 4th power, equals, and it'll tell you. But I need to see that you understand how to input or what you're inputting in your calculator. Questions? Moving along. All right, I just want to think for a second. That's all we're going to do is think. I'm going to talk, kind of talk about what we're going to move towards. So don't get stuck on this. But these are two different sequences of numbers. All right, some of us are really good about patterns and finding the pattern. And then <clears throat> we're going to have to write rules. And again, I'm going to give you different formulas to write the rules and stuff like that. But let's look at this first one. I have one, three, five, seven. And it keeps going, right? All right, so would you guys agree with me? I just want you to look at this like this. This is the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term. This is the fourth term. Yes? All right, so I just made a little XY chart. 
It just happens to be horizontal. Now, how did I get from the first term to the second term? I added two, okay? How did I get from the second term to the third term? I added two. How did I get from the third term to the fourth term? I added two. Okay, so what do you guys notice? What's the rule? What's going every single time? Plus two. Okay, this is called an arithmetic sequence. We'll talk about this a little more. If I were to graph this, this would be linear, meaning what? It's a line, okay? What is the equation of a line? Y equals MX plus B. Now, I'm getting a little bit ahead. I know that. We'll talk about this a little more when we do 8.2. But in a linear equation, M is your slope, right? Yeah. Well, in this case, we're talking about sequences. What do you think my slope is? The plus two. The plus two. It's going up by two every time. So if I was going to write the rule for this, I would say two is my slope. Instead of an X, what letter do you think I would use? What did we use in the first two examples? What letter? N. N, good. So 2N. And then in Y equals MX plus B, what's the B? One. What, what, what is the B, though? The Y intercept, right? A Y intercept is when X equals what number? Zero. So if I was going to find the quote unquote zero term, and I'm just getting you guys to think, we're not doing this yet. How would I find out what the zero term is right here? How'd you get that, Pablo? Yep, since we're going up by two every time, to go backwards, you do the opposite. So what's one minus two? So here's the rule. So we're gonna get to where we write rules. Given a sequence, you're gonna write a rule. Now there's a formula to do it, and it'd be super easy, but I just wanted you guys to see you can think through this. If I said to you, what is the 955th term? The reason we write, write rules is because you guys could go through here and say, okay, the fifth term is nine, the sixth term is 11, the seventh term. You could just keep adding two till you get to the 955th term, or you could just plug 955 in for n and figure out what that term would be. All right, so that's why we're going to do that. <clears throat> now, if I look at the second one, again, this is the most thinking we're going to have to do is right here on this problem because I'm just talking. 2, 5, 10, 17. You guys agree with me that 2 is the first term, 5 is the second, 10 is the third, this is the fourth, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see if anybody can figure this out. Oh, wait, the pattern? Uh-huh. Okay, so the pattern is like, uh, it starts off 3 and then 5 and 7. Okay, so look, Pablo sees a pattern. He says, okay, wait, it goes up by 3, then it goes up by 5, then it goes up by 7. Okay, I see what you're saying. It's adding, it's adding two, two. Yeah. The sl you're adding like the, like the next odd number, yeah. right? Okay, in words, I agree with you. But if I was gonna write a mathematical rule, you can't just say, well, you're just gonna add, you, you can't, there's no way we can write that out mathematically. So let's think about it a little differently. I like the way you're thinking. What can I do to my term number all right, these are my term numbers. What can I do to my term number? Let's just think for a second. Since it doesn't go up by the exact same every time, I can't just write a rule like we did the first time. We're just, we're just thinking for a second. <clears throat> I need one to become a two, and then I need two to become a five. Then I need three to become a 10, and four to become 17. What do I have to do? And it's gotta be a rule that'll work every single time. Sean, what are you thinking? I like it, very good, n squared. Look, think about your term number. Here's my term. If I square it, what's one squared? One. Plus one is? Two. Okay, so what's two squared? Four. Plus one is? Five. What's three squared? One. Plus one is? Three. Perfect, good job, Kennedy and Sean. Say, I am impressed, we did not get that in my other class period. There you go, see, because you're smart and you're thinking, that's good. You're thinking. So we're going to work on writing different rules. Later on, I just wanted you to see that you guys can do it. You're so smart. All right, I'm going to talk about recursive here for one second, and then we're not doing recursive again because recursive, I think, is really silly. When you have a recursive rule, you have to know the term before it. You have to know the term before, before. 
four to get to the next one. So it really doesn't make sense. Like if I have this rule up here, <clears throat> this one here, and I say, okay, what's the 200th term? You just plug in 200. In a recursive rule, you have to know what the previous one is to find the next one. So what's the point of a rule? You can just do whatever. Like if it's add three every time, you just add three to the number. But what this is saying right here in a recursive rule, they have to give you the first term, which they do. They tell me that the first term of this sequence is three. And then here's the rule. This right here means the term before it. See where it says K minus one? That just means the term before it. So if the first term is three, and I want to find the second term, well, I'm going to take two, and I'm going to multiply it by the term before it, which was three, right? And I add one, and I get what? Seven. So now if I'm going to find the next one, <clears throat> I'm going to take two, and then I take the term before it, which was what? Seven, and I add one, which gives me what? All you're doing is just plugging in the term before it. This is the only thing we'll do with recursive. So the answer you put into the... Yeah, to the next one. Okay. <clears throat> so it's 15. So to find the next one, I say 2, and I'm going to take the term here and plug it in. Yep, 31. To find the fifth term, I take 2, and then this term before it, plus 1, and I get... Yeah. That's all we're going to do with recursives. <clears throat> How many of you have heard about, talked about, thought about factorial notation? No. Nothing? No. Okay. <laughs> if I write this, look, if I write this, read that word. What? Now read that word. What? There you go. So if I write this, that was adorable. What does that say? Five. Five! All right, that does not mean like it does, it's not in the exclamation point, guys. This is factorial. There is a factorial button on your calculator. <clears throat> um, I'll show you where it is. You can use it. It's very easy. I'll show you where it is. On most calculators, I know where it is. <clears throat> but I want you to, to write out what I'm showing you just to show me work, but you can use the button on your calculator. What the exclamation point means is you are multiplying the number that is there and everything below it. So it means times four, times three, times two, times one. Wait, didn't we do this in uh, You should have. That's why when you're I was like, nope, never seen it before. And all of a sudden you're like, oh wait, yeah, we did. Yeah, but it, I so if I had nine factorial, that's not just a really excited nine. What does that mean? Eight, nine, seven, eight, nine times eight, times seven, times six, times five, times four, times three, times two. Do I have to write the one? Yes. You don't have to. If you do, it's fine. If you don't, I'm not upset about it. <clears throat> but factorial, when you have a number with the exclamation point behind it, all that means is the number that you see and then multiply everything behind it. Two things you do need to be aware of is zero factorial equals one. Pay attention to that. One factorial is one. One times whatever. But you need to, you need to see that. All right, so like <clears throat> if you had a question on WebAssign and it said evaluate six factorial, what I want you to see is I want to see that you guys understand. This would be on a quiz or a test. I want to see that you understand six, five, four, three, two, that you know what that means. And then you can just do it in your calculator. That's it. <clears throat> Questions? We okay? All right, let's do some examples. All right, look at this. It says write the first five terms of the sequence given, look, here's the formula that you're plugging into, and it says begin with zero. So this is how you would show me your work. You would say A sub zero equals. So I have two to the zero power over zero factorial, right? You guys okay with that? What is two to the zero power? One, and what is zero factorial? One, so my first, my zero term is one. So now I'm going to find the first term. So it's 2 to the first power over what? 1 factorial. What's 2 to the first power? 2 over 1, which is 2. two. All right, so now I'm going to find the third term. So I have <coughs> 2 to the third power over what? 3. Would it be the second one? Or would it be 
Did I skip? I did. I skipped. I'm sorry. I'm so excited with factorials, I skipped the second term. <laughs> sorry. Let's find the second term. So I have 2 to the second power over 2 factorial. So 2 times 2 is 4. And 2 factorial just means 2 times 1, which is 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. All right, so now 3. I have 2 to the third power over 3 factorial. Now, if you have something like this, this is what I want to see. 2 to the third power is what? 8. Eight. Divided by, what does 3 factorial mean? 3 times 2 times 1. If you don't write the 1, that's okay. I want to see this step, guys, because your calculators will do all of this for you if you put it in right. But I want to at least see this step. I don't need to see anything else. You guys can tell me that it's 8 over 6, right? And then it reduces to what? 4 over... 8 over 6 becomes what? 8 over 6 becomes... 4 over... Three. Wow. <laughs> wow. So if I'm going to find the fourth term, I have a sub four. So I have two to the fourth power over four factorial. So what I want to see from this point, you guys can tell me two to the fourth power is what? 16 over four times three times two times one. You don't have to write the one. Now, when you go to evaluate this, guys, you can do this in your calculator or you can go ahead and cross cancel if you want to. Look at the bottom and the top. <clears throat> They're just factors. 4 goes into 4 how many times? Once. 4 goes into 16 how many times? 4. Agreed? Okay. So four, uh, 2 goes into 2 how many times? Once. 2 goes into 4 how many times? 2. two. So my answer is what? 2 thirds. Yeah. Or you could have just done 16 over 24 and simplified. doesn't matter. Look at this next one. Look at 8. Okay, common mistake. You guys would multiply 2 times 6 and tell me that's 12 factorial. It's not. That's okay. It's the same thing. Do you want me to just... I just want to make sure I get through everything. Okay, look. So I would write this as 8 times what? 7, Seven times, 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 times. Okay over 2 times 1, right? I'm just writing the 1 on this one so you have to see some separation. And then I have what? 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Now, you can go ahead and multiply the numerator, get an answer. Multiply the denominator, get an answer, then simplify. Or we can cross cancel, top and bottom. Do you guys see a 6 on top and a 6 on the bottom? Cross them off. Do you see a five on top and a five on the bottom? Cross them off. What about fours? What about threes? What about twos? Good. Anything else you can cross cancel? Okay, one can go away. What else? Nothing else? Two goes into two once. Two goes into eight how many times? So what's my answer to this problem? That's it. <clears throat> okay, another way you could have done this, and again, I'm going to show you a little shortcut for writing it because I'm going to expect to see some sort of work from you guys. 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times... You guys agree? Right? Because it's everything behind it? Yeah. So on the bottom, I have 2 times 1 times 6 what? You don't have to, if they're the exact same on the bottom and top, save yourself some time. You can do that. If you don't see that, no big deal. Write it all out and then cross it out. But do you see how 6 factorial on the top is going to cross off with 6 factorial on the bottom? And then 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 8 4 times, and you're left with 28. <clears throat> Good. Don't worry about B right now. We'll talk about that later. Okay, now we're going to get into the really hard part. Do you see if, whoops. Okay, you guys see this. This is called summation notation. Some of you, when you go to college next year, are going to be very familiar with Greek letters, not because of your math class, right? You'll be able to just say the whole Greek alphabet because you're in Lambda Chi, and I'm in 80 Pi, and I'm in Sigma Nu, and all I know them all. 
right? This is just, that's a Greek, Greek letter, sigma, right? <clears throat> We're going to talk about sigma notation, right? You have an index of summation. You have the upper limit of summation, the lower limit of summation. Guys, look at this. The number on the bottom, the lower limit of summation. That means the number that you're starting with. The number at the top, the upper limit of summation. That's where you stop. <clears throat> what does the word sum mean to do? Add. Add. All you're doing in a problem like this, ladies and gentlemen, they're giving you the expression that they want you to evaluate. What is the number that they want you to start plugging in for I? One. What is the last number they want you to plug in for I? Five. So you're starting with one, then you're going to plug in two, three, four, and five. And what do you think you're going to do with all of those answers that you get to find the summation? You add them together. So you literally, this is how you would show me your work. You would say, okay, well, three times one, three times two, three times three, three times four, and three times five. I started with one because that's the lower limit. I ended with five because that's the upper. What is three times one? What is three times two? What is three times three? What is three times four? What is three times five? Now I'm going to find the summation. What do I do with all those numbers? What's three plus six plus nine plus 12 plus 15? There you go. Now, two minutes ago, if I said to you guys, do this problem, you'd be like, what? Now when I say do this problem, what are you guys going to do? What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Plug in, plug in. Plug in three, four, five, five, and six, and then do what? Perfect. But I like the what. That was cute. Okay, so this is how you show me your work. You're going to say, okay, one times three squared one plus, sorry, I said that wrong. I wrote it right, but I said it wrong. You're gonna say one plus three squared. Then it's one plus three to, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Yeah, I was right, hold on. Okay, rewind, that didn't happen. So I have one plus what? Three squared. <clears throat> then I have one plus four squared. Then I have one plus five squared. Then I have one plus six squared. How did you guys know to start with three? It's the bottom one. How did you know to stop at six? It's the top one. So let's evaluate this. What is three squared plus one? 10. What is four squared plus one? 17. <laughs> what? Five squared plus one? 26. And then six squared plus one? Now, if I'm going to find the summation, what do I do? What's 37 plus 26 plus 17 plus 10? 90. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. That's 8.1.